So a real insight into why you and Prince Harry set up the Royal Foundation. Did you ever imagine it would grow like this? I think when we first started it, it started as a very small idea with Harry and I scratching our heads, going, how, uh, how can we do something that's going to help us in the future? How are we going to build something that's going to provide almost a vehicle to allow us to um, impact in charitable areas? Because it's quite difficult at the time. Um, Harry and I used to go to a lot of uh, engagements and see these incredible charities doing really great work, but felt that we, we could give more, and how could we do that? And so the foundation idea sort of bubbled up as a sort of vehicle to, to be able to do more when we, when, we, when we walked away from these engagements. So you both take credit for coming up with the idea? Totally. <laughs> Are there any particular moments that stand out for you or people you've met along the way? I think, for me, um, I think... Probably United for Wildlife was quite a big moment for me where I realised the convening power um, of what we could do. Um, I think getting seven leading global conservation NGOs and charities together in one room and getting them to unite behind one particular focus, I thought that was, that was when I realised that actually maybe this, this had got some legs, this has got some real um, ability to do something. Because I found uniting people together and bringing them together made so much, it broke down barriers, it made things move much quicker, much smoother and actually we got more impact from that. And then leading on to that, the, the mental health campaign heads together. I think, you know, basically we replicated the same thing again on a sort of national scale. Um, and I think it surprised all of us how much it, it took off. And again, the fact that we had these leading experts who've been working in the mental health field for way longer than we had, but we felt that we could, we could provide, um, well, they provided the foundation and the, the solidity of, of the, the campaign. And we could then help provide some of the, um, some of the other conduits. Duchess, we can definitely give you credit for coming up with the idea to work together on the campaign around mental health. How did that come about and why was that important for you? It's very generous of you to say it was an idea, but actually it was actually going back right to the beginning um, when we were looking at the different ways in which we could all work with the foundation. And I suppose I'd learnt through sort of meeting some of my patronages um, that, that there, there were sort of all these underlying causes across so many different sectors. Um, mental health just kept on flagging up every time, whether it's with addiction or school support um, and with vulnerable young children. So um, it's something that I felt very passionate about. But it's obviously such a huge topic. It wasn't as big as I actually thought it was, but, um, but it was something that I think all three of us at the time felt that we really could make a far bigger impact together on rather than just one of us acting alone on it. And how much of a difference did it make, the three of you, behind that call to action? Well, I, I feel, I've always felt really strongly in sort of putting, putting ideas together. Um, sort of, we all had very different areas that we were working, working with, sort of Harry with doing a lot with, with knife crime, William with a lot with homelessness, and for me with sort of yeah, addiction and things. And I just think being able to sort of come, to, come together to find some sort of common, common ground and, and be able to sort of um, yeah, draw ideas together and, and, and find a way forward, I think was really, really exciting. Megan, you are new to the foundation, but you have lots of experience working with charities, especially grassroots organisations. It would be interesting to find out, first of all, your impressions of the Royal Foundation so far and what you're hoping to do. <laughs> Don't be too critical. Yeah, no, of course. Um, well, obviously, it's incredibly exciting. And yes, I think for me, it's been a very long time working on cause-driven work, specifically with women and girls' rights. But, you know, to see the model of the foundation is really interesting because while I've worked with larger NGOs, or I've also worked with really small grassroots organizations where you can see a higher level of impact, in my opinion, because there's a lot less red tape. What you're seeing here, and what I noticed with Heads Together from a global perspective, because I wasn't here, obviously, when it was happening, um, was the power of convening all of these smaller organizations who have the same issue but need that extra push and support under this umbrella, you're able to achieve that. And the impact they all made with Heads Together was tremendous. So I'm very excited to be able to work on initiatives similarly and that can have that same sort of impact globally. And it's great that you are now able to work together. That's exciting on <laughs> things that you are passionate about. Um, how do you think, Prince Harry, you can make the most impact through your work with the foundation going forward? Um, I think, as, as William's touched on, as we've, as we've mentioned in the past, it's, it's all about changing mindsets. I think the, the biggest successes that, uh, that the Royal Foundation has had to date is all based around changing mindsets, whether it's the perception 
of uh, wounded, injured and sick servicemen and women across the globe. The Invictus Games. The Invictus Games. Mm. Well, part, part of the Invictus mm. Games and Endeavour Fund uh, uh, as well. But also uh, with Heads Together. You know, Heads Together was a, is an amazing convening power but also the perception of, of, of mental health now across this country and also in other countries has changed, without a doubt. Um, and I think the timing, was, the timing was, was, was absolutely perfect on that. Um, but again, it's, it's all about tackling the, the cause and not the symptom. Mm. And I think in today's society, we have, it's very easy to get sucked into trying to sort out the symptom. Um, we, we, the four of us and, the, and everybody at the Royal Foundation and all of our supporters, hopefully, believe that actually in order to, to have long-lasting change, to have a long-lasting impact, you have to somewhat ignore the symptom or go to the symptom, talk, listen to them, and then come wind it all the way back to find out the cause because otherwise you're just putting a Band-Aid on the problem. And, you know, in some instances, I think some organisations, that's, that's all they can do, but we realise that with this very unique opportunity and this unique platform that we have to be tackling the cause of the problem. Um, and I think um, youth violence within, within the UK at the moment is a classic example where, you know, back end of last year, um, knife crime skyrocketed. <clears throat> and I spoke to some of, uh, some of the people at Royal Foundation and said, right, knife crime, let's look into it. But in reality, knife crime is a symptom of a, of a cause. So therefore, go and speak to the young people, which is what we're doing, speak to those communities, and actually listen to what they think the problems are, and then rewind it all the way back and go, right, what is, what is the root cause of all of these different issues? And then, you're, I mean, effectively, you're saving money as well, because you're saying, right, we're investing all of our time, all of our effort into this problem, and we're going to, by fixing that, we're going to fix. So you're not coming in telling them what to do. No. You are helping them to come up, facilitating them coming up with the solutions. <laughs> exactly what William said in his speech. You know, we're, we're the Royal Foundation. I'm not saying that other foundations don't listen, but we pride ourselves on going into a going into a situation, convening people and listening and hoping that all of those partners and all of those people agree that the problems are the same thing. So far your work has covered a wide range of issues um, supporting the armed forces, conservation, young people, mental health. What do you want to focus on next? Um, I think we've looked at ways of uh, collaborating again. Um, I think it'd be wonderful if we could do another project or another campaign um, you know, similar, similar impacts heads together or, you know, as, a, as a unit, as a family. But I think um, we've got to be careful how and when we target those moments. You've got to use them carefully and you've got to plan for them. They take a lot of preparation to do. Um, I think each of us have got our own ideas and work streams that we'd like to, to build upon. For me personally, I think um, uh, following on from Heads Together, tackling male mental health. There's a still a huge stigma and taboo around male mental health. Um, suicide, for instance, among young men is still one of the biggest killers in the country. Um, some of the statistics that came out from Heads Together was that we managed to uh, create 800,000 new conversations amongst men on mental health, which we thought was really good. Um, and the other interesting fact as well was that only 2% of people at work go to HR to talk about mental health. 2%. So that shows that you know, work is one of the most stressful places that we go to every day. And the fact is that people aren't feeling like they can go to work and actually speak to those people who, in theory, know the system and know what you're, the environment you're working in. Um, and that we've got, to, we've got to really do something about mental health in the workplace as well. So I think on that side of things, there's quite a lot to do there. I'm still very keen on working with um, United Wildlife on the conservation. The League of Wildlife Trade has got a big year. We've got a, the last conference coming up in London in October. And I'm hoping we get senior representation from around the world to come to that. Um, Cyberbullying is another area. Uh, recently we got a bit of uh, traction with social media companies and the internet companies uh, came together under the task force, which the Royal Foundation helped put together, um, to try and um, bring everyone together to fix what is a growing problem, which is obviously cyberbullying and uh, online activity basically keeping children safe online. So I think those are the sort of key areas I'm really working on. One of the big things that we've discussed as well, which we'd really love to, and obviously it's, it's sort of pie-in-the-sky theory at the moment, it's kind of ambitious, but we like to be ambitious, very ambitious, um, uh, is uh, the idea of a big um, tackling or, or linking into all the big foundations in the world. So as I was saying in my speech, there's a lot of foundations out there with an incredible amount of money, an incredible amount of um, ability to, to move things forwards. But I think what we can bring as the Royal Foundation is that convening effort. And I think if you put some of the big foundations in the world together, along with our convening power of the Royal Foundation, and if we focus on certain big issues, ho hopefully global, I think we can make a real, really big difference. So no, I'm, I'm really excited about the future in that sense.
And Duchess, what are you most excited about when it comes to the future of your work with the Foundation? There's, there's sort of lots that I think I'm hugely excited about with, with the Foundation from the Foundation's perspective. They mentioned before about working together. You know, looking at William as well, looking at sort of long-term prospects. You know, imagine if we were able to do sort of a heads-together campaign with another generation of members of the royal family. I think that's so exciting to think that with so many more of, of, of us working on the same cause or similar causes, we could make a, a real impact. Um, I also, for, for me personally, I'm really interested in keeping going with the sort of the, the mental health um, element and really focusing on sort of the early years, early intervention, looking at how early can we go back really to support the next generation to help break the cycle um, and looking at how to support um, parents and families, um, bring up the next generation of, of, sort of mentally sort of happy and well children, but also helping them provide, have the tools as well to, to, to cope with the challenges of, of modern day family and parenthood. And how does your own personal experience feed into that? Because I know those issues that you mentioned, early intervention, uh, coping with parenthood, supporting the next generation of, of mothers, are issues that are very close to your heart. Absolutely, and I've learned a huge amount from firstly the, the patronages that I've worked with, but also some of the amazing experts that I've met along the way. And, you know, it, it, you can't help but reflect on then your, your own life, and it's definitely had an impact on how sort of I look at how I mother, how we work as a family, and, you know, how we hope to bring up our, our children. And I've learned so much, and I just, you know, if, if some of this knowledge and, and some of the facts and figures that I've learned along the way could be passed on to the general public, I, th I think in, in an awareness campaign or something like that, I think it would be you know, hugely beneficial to all mothers and parents out there. Megan, you touched on it before. Mm -hmm. You have, it's well known, you've championed the empowerment of women and young girls and promoting their self-worth. How do you hope to continue that work with the Royal Foundation? Um, yes, I mean, I think that knowing that I've, I've just been here for three months, right? <laughs> and in that You've amount of time, for, well, but with that said, for me, it's very important to, once you hit the ground running, even if you're doing it quietly behind the scenes, which is what I've focused my energy on thus far, is meeting with the right people, meeting with the right organizations behind the scenes quietly, learning as much as I can so that I can maximize the opportunity we have here to really make an impact. I think what's interesting is I hear a lot of people saying when speaking about girls' empowerment, finding and knowing their worth, or women's empowerment as well, you'll often hear people say, well, you're helping women find their voices. And I fundamentally disagree with that because women don't need to find a voice. They have a voice, they need to feel empowered to use it, and people need to be encouraged to listen. And I think right now in the climate that we're seeing with so many campaigns, I mean, with Me Too and Time's Up, there is no better time than to really continue to shine a light on women feeling empowered and people really helping to support them, men included in that. I mean, it, it makes such a tremendous difference. So. Um, yeah, just, um, I guess we wait a couple months and then we can hit the ground running. But up until then, I, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> but like you said, I mean, you've been here for three, yeah, yeah wedding true. first. <laughs> Get that done. We but can multitask. Have, having fun. said that, you have been quietly, like you say, behind the scenes, let's just say laying the foundations for your future work. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Sadly, I can't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, you know, if, if, if we know how, and I certainly know how passionate I am, and Harry and I see the world so similarly in our approach of being very hands on with things, what I can say is that I have been fortunate enough to meet with some incredible women and organizations in general in the UK that are doing work here, but then also knowing that some of the work that I've done in the past has been in Commonwealth countries like Rwanda, India. So this reach, I think, can have, um, can have some really nice legs to it once we can start. But After I guess, May. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> to be continued. Okay. I um, look forward to picking up on that conversation yeah, me too. Uh, later. Thank you. Um, Prince Harry, what are the biggest challenges as you see them going forward? What do you want to focus on? Um, I, I think, <laughs> where do you even start with that? I think, um, as we've discussed, heads together, there's so much more to do. 
Um, we've, 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 probably, we've, we've, made a, we've made a difference. We know that. Everybody that's part of the campaign knows that. Hopefully all the partners uh, feel that. Some of them are nodding, some of them aren't. Um, <laughs> but I think we, we, we understand, we realise that there's, there's so much more to do. It's very much um, un unfinished work there. So I'm looking forward to supporting that. Again, Coach Corps is a fantastic thing that we've got going on here. Um, you know, something like 75 or 80 percent of young people in this country, and I mean young people like this, this high, sort of six, seven years old, um, have a bad experience with their first, with their first coach, with their first um, sort of uh, sporting endeavour as such. Um, and that has a massive impact for them you know, moving forward. So Coach Corps and the expansion of Coach Corps is very important. A um, couple of things that I'm really passionate about and working on is uh, sustainable tourism, so I'm looking into that at the moment. There's a huge number of players and different issues that, that need to be discussed, but I think in a typical Royal Foundation way, we might have the ability to be able to convene and bring people together because at the end of the day, these ecosystems that are, that are out there they need to be protected, they need to be seen as an asset, and if they are treated as an asset, then, they, then the local communities will benefit from them. And, um, and tourism companies will be incentivized to look after them for the longer term. Um, and then also, as I've touched on briefly, uh, youth violence in this country. Again, um, you know, it is, it's, it's a growing problem um, no matter where you are in the UK. Obviously, a, a lot of stuff in the news with knife crime, knife crime in London. But just to bang on again, that whole symptom and cause bit. I think you know, we really have an opportunity here to, to tackle the root causes of some of these, of some of these massive issues. So, as I said, we're, we're pretty tied up with planning a wedding at the moment, um, but we, we're really looking forward to, to, to working as, as, as a pair and as a four going forward and hoping to, to make as much of a difference uh, where we can. Um, so there's a, there's a hell of a lot of work to do. Well, we're looking forward to both the wedding and the work oh. you are planning to do. Um, just reflecting on last year, it sounds like you're planning Heads Together Part 2, if you like, but reflecting on the success of last year, I mean, it, it, I know we keep saying it, but it really did change the national conversation around mental health. You had the world's first mental health marathon, a, a hugely impactful social media campaign. Did you expect it to be that successful? No. <laughs> That's an answer. It was, okay. was organised on the back of a fag packet. <laughs> well, yeah. Good to know. It was. <laughs> um, I think, as, as, as you alluded to earlier, Catherine, Catherine was the one who put the sort of joined the dots together for all of us. She was the one who came up with the, the idea and the, and, and the concept, as it were, because I mean, Harry and I had never, never thought about doing a campaign as such before. And, when you tackle mental health, it was very difficult to know where to start. It's such a big issue and it's so entrenched in society in a negative way, sadly, that we weren't quite sure how we would do it and how long it would take. So after a number of conversations, uh, doing a campaign was seen as the, the quickest and most effective way to make a, make a difference and make an impact um, relatively early. And we, 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 mon we went through the whole uh, sort of uh, cycle of how do you, do you start with mental health? Do you still call it mental health? And all the leading charities, again, the experts helped us um, try and uh, be more coherent in what our campaign was going to be. And it was a unanimous voice, really, that tackling the taboo, tackling the stigma, could be the biggest thing that we could do uh, that would help them with their work and allow their, their particular individual charities to uh, rise um, out, of the, out of the stigma. Um, and I think we were surprised by how quickly that went. But, but also having that focus of the marathon, we can't thank the marathon enough for being, accepting you know, the mental health marathon last uh, year. It was fantastic. It gave us a focus point. It gave us something to drive the campaign towards. And then to see all the runners in their headbands was quite something. Um, even if we had to wear them ourselves. It's not, not right. um, but it was, it was worth it to see that, that relief. And, and actually, there, you know, during the mental health campaign, and I know Rian, I know she's here somewhere, and she's going to hate the fact that I pointed her out. But people like Rian, who, who spoke on the Mental Health uh, Marathon, she, she ran the Marathon for Mental Health, along with many other amazing people who had had very, very sad times happen to them or very, very difficult testing times. I was completely and utterly blown away, and actually it makes me incredibly proud when someone like Rian comes along and pr shares her story, shares what happened to her, and um, really gave us the motivation uh, and the impact ourselves to see that this was really important work and that we have to keep promoting that, we have to keep pushing that. But we couldn't have done it without people like Rian and all those in the mental health um, uh, uh, campaign and the marathon itself. Megan, what did you make of it watching from afar? Oh my, I mean, I think probably the same sentiment that most people had. Obviously, happening here, the stigmatization surrounding mental health is different and unique in every territory. But I was in Canada at the time, and I just remember 
how much news coverage it was getting. And just in that alone, it was getting such a conversation point happening amongst people. Um, and I think, again, to the point that they've all touched on earlier, it was because of that togetherness, because you had so many different organizations under this umbrella, and each of them is shining this spotlight on it. So I think in North America, at least from that standpoint, I remember it being, it being a very large point of conversation, and I would imagine in other countries as well. It made such a huge impact. It was very impressive to watch from afar. And I have to ask you, all the work you do together is great, but working together as family, do you ever have disagreements about things? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, healthy, healthy disagreements. Okay, the last thing you disagreed on, how do you resolve it? Uh, I can't remember, they come so thick and fast. <laughs> but it's, but it's, is it resolved? We don't know. Oh, we don't know. Well, you're putting on a great show if it's not. Um, no, but it's really, I think it's really good that, the, that we've got, you know, four four different personalities and you know we've all got that same that same passion to want to make a difference um, but you know different different opinions and I think those opinions work really really well working as, as family does have its challenges of course it does everybody here the fact that everyone's laughing means that everybody <laughs> knows exactly what it's like um, but um, look you know we're, we're, we're stuck together for the rest of our lives so <laughs> This is true. Togetherness at its Togetherness, finest, yeah, yeah. Can I actually, going, going to your point as well, actually initially, can you remember the sort of big round tables with the charity partners? You know, it is sometimes hard to find these common, these common grounds where everyone really can get behind and, yeah. and things like that. And actually, that, that is the challenge, you know. Everyone is, our individuals are all working towards their own ambitions. But if you can, for us as, as, as patrons, but also the charity partners, I think you did a fantastic... Um, speech recently about everyone collaborating and working together and in doing so you can make such a, a, you know, a much bigger impact. And four heads are better than one. Well, and, but, and thank goodness it's such differing personalities yeah. and, and that everyone's very communicative because that's how you can really see bigger change. Mm -hmm. If everyone's thinking the same way, how are you going to push the envelope? You know, how are you really going to break through in a different sort of mindset? Changing mindsets and all of that is part of this communication that we have constantly. So I think it's it's part of the reason they've had so much success with Heads Together and whatever we end up working on yeah. moving forward. And you encourage that diversity of thinking between yourselves. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much. We look forward Thanks to hearing to much more throughout the morning. Thank you. <laughs>